Welcome to beginner vector drawing. Vector drawing looks like this, with blocks of color layered up. This one shows a simple landscape with a mountain and river, and takes no drawing skill whatsoever. So you're going to head to Google Drive, click on New at the top left, and then you'll head down to More, and that's where you'll find Google Drawings. It will open a project up immediately, and you'll have your workspace. Right in the middle of the checkerboard is your actual page, and that's where your work outside of here is just a workspace. And so if when you save your work, if you leave something to the outside, you uh, you won't see it on the finished project. And so we've got this mountain landscape. I thought I'd use this one. You can do it from your head. You can use a photo. You can even trace it. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but down here on the right, you can see I can move the page and make the aspect ratio what I want. I would say... Um, don't usually, you don't usually want to make it smaller. You can make it bigger, absolutely, because it starts off as a smallish size. And so if you need to, you know, uh, adjust it like I did where I wanted it a little more wide, I did that. You can see the photo's got a river, we've got trees, we've got a mountain back here. And so when you're, when you're making something with digital art or with regular traditional art, you might think of uh, layering things. So building it up one piece at a time. And you can see we've got about five distinct chunks that we would need to make in order to do that. To make the background, the background is one of the first layers. You can drop that in right away. Here's a bunch of preset colors. You can hit this plus sign. And then you have access to millions of colors. So this whole rainbow down here and then all the colors within. And so one cool thing that you can do is if you right click, go to background and then click on the eyedropper the eyedropper can grab color from your original photo. So now you can see that blue from the sky. I've got the exact one of the exact colors that's coming from there. Now, when I want to build up these mountains, what I want to do is grab, I could use shapes. So I could use a bunch of shapes. I could build them up. I could find a bunch of triangles and rectangles and just arrange them um, by using shapes. But this is a simpler and easier way is going to the line tool and going to almost to the bottom to the polyline right there. So what this allows you to do is click and make anchor points and you can get whatever shape you want out of it. You could get a square shape. You can get um, a very detailed or kind of rounded shape. And you'll see we've got some jagged mountains here. And I'm going to start really low down and off the page because that's perfectly fine to go off the page. Again, it'll save... And then now I'm clicking. Every time I click, it puts a little anchor point down so it establishes where the line goes. And I'm just looking at the mountains. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is kind of like hand drawing, if you want to think of it that way, for computers where I've got a reference photo, but I'm not tracing it. I'm just I'm putting it down the way I see it with my hand and my eye. And so some people you know, don't have uh, a lot of experience with a pencil. Um, but a lot of experience with a mouse, and so that can work really nicely. So I'm just generally doing the shape that I'm seeing, and then um, it's like a lasso. I start one place, and then I actually end in the same place as I started. So there's my end. I click, and it establishes that shape. So now that I have the shape here, um, I want to change it. I want to change some things. I'm going to go to Select. I'm going to click on it. You can see this got a blue outline. And if I go over here to Border Color... I, I can change the border color. I can also go to here and change the border size. So you can see it gets like a thick black line and there's lots of uh, choices there. You can also turn the line off. If you don't want an outline, it just disappears. If you go into fill, you can see all the same colors and you can pick specific ones here that are preset, but you can also choose your own. So you can look around and see if you want the, if you see the blue or whatever color you're looking for, you can do that. Um, for this one, I'm going to use the eyedropper again and just see what color the mountains are because they're, look at that, there's like a sandy color, um, almost like a medium skin tone. And so that's interesting. We might, we might just color them gray right off the bat because that's what we think of as mountains. But uh, here we go. We've got this. I'm going to place it where I think it's going to fit on the page. The nice thing about digital art is that I can, you know, change any of this stuff at a, at a moment's notice. Um, and so I'm looking at the placement of the mountains. Now I'm looking at the next layer. So if the next one's going to be like the grassy kind of tree part uh, just below the rock face that I see. So this time I'm actually going to trace it. So I'm going to grab my line tool once again, my polygon, 
and I'm going to click and just do a general job. Again, if you want it, something specific and you want to put a lot of detail, you can. I'm just doing it nice and quick. I'm going to go outside the space and then I don't need to worry about the bottom. So there you go. I've got that shape. Now that this shape, I'm going to move into place. And because it's a smaller photo, I'm going to I'm going to bump up the size here as well once I have everything set. So I'm going to change the color. I'm going to take the border off. I'm going to do a custom green color for the trees. So I'm just going to find the green I like and then find that particular um, hue of it and then go OK. So perfect. I have that green block and now I can size it to the page so you can hold shift and drag it out and make sure you're you're covering the whole page. And then now I'm going to match it up almost like a almost like a puzzle piece. I'm going to make sure that it's overlapping where the rocks uh, where it should be over the rocks. And so I'm just placing it and moving it around and things can be adjusted as well. Um, so I can stretch things out if I need to. You can see I can just pull it from the side. And it's okay if it changes from the original because it's up to you. You're the artist. You get to choose. Um, if I click on the mountains and I want to move those around, then I can see that I can change that as well. And I'm seeing this little corner right here is not looking so good. It's got a too much of a sharp drop off. And so if I right click on that and go edit points, look at this, I can edit the points that I already made with the mountain. I can reshape this whole mountain if I want to. All I need to do is do a little adjustment, but there we go. And so now we're gonna do the next layer. The next layer is gonna be this tree layer in the front that's right up next to the water. And so I'm just gonna generally do it. If you're doing it quickly like me and you're getting, uh, you know, it's just kind of loose and it's gonna be um, very simple, then that's gonna get yourself a three. You're gonna get yourself a three on that one. I'm gonna go around the, all the, even the trees on this side because they're the kind of the same color and the same distance. And so I'm gonna go up and down these peaks a little bit. If there's quite a few peaks, I'm going to kick it into hyperdrive and you can see uh, I'm doing it loosely, getting uh, some of the peaks, but not all. Again, you can do more detail if you'd like to. I'm gonna make sure I get to the end again. And there we go. I'm gonna do my classic, taking the border off and then changing the color of the fill. So the fill in this one's gotta be darker than the last, um, the last layer, cause they need to be different. So I'm gonna make it a darker green and I might even go darker than that too, because it's nice to have contrast when the colors are quite different. Um, but here we go. Let's take a look. Let's drag this to the bottom, to the actual, to my actual drawing. I'm going to drag it out, making sure to hold shift to begin with to make sure that it's sticking right. And then placing that thing. And so it's going to take a little adjustment for sure. And that's kind of the nice thing that you're not, you know, you're not stuck. You're not trying to make a perfect photorealistic picture. You can mess with things. You can put in extra trees. You can take things out. You can um, you can add and subtract out of as many things as you want. Now let's focus on the river. The, ro the river is going to be the last thing that we do. And I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to show you how to send um, blocks of color back and forward. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to trace the lake part here. And I'm just going to do this really simple because I'm, I'm going to end up pulling this last tree layer forward uh, in front of the, the water. So I'm going to change, make my color. So I like this greenish color that we see around our mountains in the Rocky Mountains. And uh, so there we go. I've got, the, I've got a good color there. And then what I want to do is I want to move this behind the tree layer so that the tree layer is on front. So I am actually going to click on the tree layer. I'm going to go to order and then I want to bring this to the front. So I'm going to bring the tree layer front, the lake or the rivers there. So there, now you can see it's behind. It's overlapping. The trees are overlapping the water and it looks right. So those are the basics of putting those blocks of color. Now, how do we get this? How do we submit this? Well, we can go to file, download, and then get a JPEG. And then as I said, you know, I can... Right now I can see a photo, I can see all these weird edges, but when I save it, it just saves what's in the middle in, in that checkerboard. And so down here I'm seeing, oh no, I made a mistake that I didn't make that big enough. I need to just stretch that over so that we can't see that corner. We want it to be seamless. 
And so now it looks, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and make sure it's covering. You always wanna do that when you download the final thing, make sure you check it before you submit it because sometimes mistakes can happen and it happens to everybody. Now that we're looking at it, that looks much better. Everything is looking the way it should in my mind. And so this thing is ready to submit. For those that want to take it further and uh, add some gradients, add some interest to it, you can add a gradient to any piece by clicking and then clicking on gradient. And then you can, there's presets down here that's pretty minimal. And so what I would suggest is you go to the plus sign, the custom plus sign that you can see on one side, there's one lighter color. On the other side, there's a darker one. You can change those individually and you'll need to. So I'm just going to click on that watercolor that I had before. And then I'm going to choose that same color, but I'm going to darken it up so that I have a color change. Gradient is, is a smooth change from one to, to another color. And right now it's coming from the radial, from the center. I'm going to make it linear. linear. And then it's going to go from dark on the bottom to light up top as we move to the left. And so that, that color change, that gradient, makes things look a little more 3D, a little more... Um, interest, boosting the interest level for sure. This works on the trees as well. And I'm gonna kick it into hyperdrive because it does take uh, a few minutes to do. And it's just picking colors though. It's picking the color block, then picking gradient, custom gradient, and then changing those colors to be how you'd like. Um, in the end, you can also change how the gradient goes. Like I said before, with the radial, it's coming from the center. You can make the darker color on the bottom, on the left to right, and that's what I'm doing with this mountain here. So I'm going to change the angle. Instead of going top to bottom, it's going to go left to right, darker on the right, lighter on the left, and then make sure there's enough. And once I click on that, that's looking good. So it's uh, it matches the water with its light on the left and darker on the right, and this is looking good. So I hope this was helpful, and I wish you luck with your project.